Thank you for the opportunity to talk today about one of the more exciting lake sturgeon projects taking place in the Lake Huron Basin, and that's the Saginaw Bay Sturgeon Restoration Project. In today's talk, I'll be giving a little background about how the project started, uh, results to date, and then also future work that we have planned to monitor success of the project. So typically on this slide, I've had names of contributors to this work, but this is a, a large project with a lot of groups and agency invo agencies involved. So I just have the partner logos on this slide, and all of these partners play a, a really unique role in the restoration process. So all of the yellow stars that you see on this map are historic lake sturgeon spawning locations identified in the Lake Huron Basin. However, currently we have only documented lake sturgeon spawning in eight river systems in the basin. That includes six rivers in Canadian waters and two rivers in uh, U.S. waters, the St. Mary's River and the St. Clair River. In order to meet the goals of the Great Lakes Fish Community objectives for Lake Huron, which are to increase the abundance of lake sturgeon to the extent that the species is removed from its threatened status in U.S. waters and maintain or rehabilitate populations in Canadian waters, the Michigan DNR initiated a stocking uh, program in the Saginaw River in the fall of 2017. The goal of this work was to rehabilitate lake sturgeon in the Saginaw River system to produce a self-sustaining population that could provide sport fishing opportunities in Saginaw Bay. And some of the specific objectives included building a genetically diverse adult population that returns to the Saginaw River system, determine differences in survival between the two stocking strategies, that's fish reared at the Black River Streamside facility operated by the Michigan DNR and Michigan State University, and fish reared at the Genoa National Fish Hatchery, and those fish are collected from Southern Lake Huron. Another objective is to just build public support for lake sturgeon in the Saginaw River Bay and uh, system. So the stocking plan includes releasing fish into the Flint, Cass, Shiawassee, and Titabawassee rivers, and 250 fish are released annually into each one of those rivers. And as I mentioned before, half of the fish come from uh, eggs collected from females in Southern Lake Huron, and then half the fish come from larvae collected in the Black River. And one of the main reasons for the two different stocking sources is to uh, increase the genetic diversity of the founding population. Every fish that is released uh, receives a pit tag, and to date, over 4,000 fall fingerlings have been stocked into the system. So as I mentioned on the previous slide, in the goal of the Saginaw River Sturgeon Project, or one of the goals of the project, is to increase sport fishing opportunities in Saginaw Bay. So one of the things I wanted to share with the group today were just some images that we've received. These are just from this past year of fishermen in Saginaw Bay and the Saginaw River catching lake sturgeon. So um, as I go through each one of these slides, um, I'll, I'll have a little bit of time so you can read some of the comments on the pictures. So we really didn't know what to expect once we started stocking lake sturgeon into the Saginaw River system. We weren't sure how long the fish were going to remain in the Saginaw River, if they were going to go right out to Saginaw Bay. But a lot of this work proves that juvenile sturgeon are staying in the Saginaw River and that they are providing a recreational fishing opportunity for fishermen. So with that, I just wanted to mention that if you do happen to capture a lake sturgeon in the Saginaw River or Saginaw Bay, you can report your catch uh, through the Eyes in the Field um, reporting program by the Michigan Department of Natural Resources. 
And in order to find this uh, report, you can just search eyes in the field lake sturgeon, and it should be one of the first uh, searches that pop up in the search bar. So in order to evaluate the success of the stocking program, um, biological assessments are being conducted. So the Michigan DNR has done annual gillnet assessments and trawl surveys. Uh, the trawl surveys have been conducted since 1971 and the gillnet survey since 1989. This work take, takes place annually in September each year. And in the fall of 2021, the first juvenile lake sturgeon were captured during this survey since the survey began. So for surveys that have been taking place for two, three, four decades, it was really great to see the, some of the juvenile lake sturgeon that were released in these systems recaptured. So one of the things we hope results from the biological assessments taking place by the Michigan DNR is that we can look at trends in juvenile lake sturgeon abundance over time. So one of the fish that was recaptured was released in 2018 from the Titabawassee River, and it was 31 inches in length. And another one of the fish was uh, from the release in 2019. It was released in the Shiawassee River, and it was 23 inches in length. So based off of this information, we also know that these lake sturgeon are growing at, at pretty fast rates. Another one of the biological assessments taken place was recently funded by the Great Lakes Fishery Trust and Saginaw Bay Watershed Initiative Network. And it's to describe the habitat use, survival, and movement patterns of the fingerling lake sturgeon stocked into the system. So we're going to use the GLATOS array in the Saginaw River and Saginaw Bay and utilize detection data from acoustic receivers to estimate dispersal distances how long these fish stay in the riverine habitat before migrating into Saginaw Bay, and also determine if these characteristics differ between the streamside reared fish reared at the Black River facility, and also fish reared in a traditional hatchery at the Genoa National Fish Hatchery. We're going to use detection histories and movement data to develop Cormac Jolly Seaver models to estimate survival for these fish um, up to about 12 months after release. So we're hoping that uh, this survival information provides us with data to inform us whether or not we're stocking enough fish in the system to meet the long-term population goals of the project. We're also working collaboratively with other acoustic telemetry projects taking place in Saginaw Bay and the Saginaw River so we can meet the objectives of uh, many other uh, projects in the system. So for some specifics on the Fall Fingerling Lake Sturgeon Acoustic Telemetry Project, we'll be implanting these Fall Fingerlings with V7 Innova C acoustic transmitters. The fish will be approximately 150 to 225 millimeters in total length when they're released in October. And we plan on releasing these acoustically tagged fish during the same time all the other uh, stocking events are taking place in the system. This project is gonna take place uh, over two years with the goal of implanting 320 fingerlings total. And as I mentioned before, we want to look at survival out to about a year post stocking. And it's expected that the battery life on these V7 acoustic transmitters is around 325 uh, days. So hopefully this presentation gave you a little bit of background about the Saginaw River Lake Sturgeon Restoration Program. It's been really exciting to see all of the anglers capture these juvenile fish out in the Saginaw River and Saginaw Bay. And um, hopefully it provided you with some ideas of the biological assessments that we're currently conducting in order to monitor the, the success of the program. Uh, before I leave today, I just wanted to mention for everyone that um, there are annual outreach events that take place at each one of the tributaries where these lake sturgeon are stocked. So please uh, get in touch with uh, any of the folks you see, uh, their logos here or, or myself, and we will uh, try to get out to one of these outreach events that are taking place. They usually take place at the end of August or the end of September each year. And with that, I'll take any questions. Thanks.